In this video, we're going to look at another example of solving a system of linear differential equations with constant coefficients using matrix methods. So let's just recall, if we've got this system of linear differential equations, constant coefficients a, b, c, and d, we can rewrite it in matrix form as follows. So we have a vector function y prime equals matrix A times vector function y, and it has this nice solution which mimics what would happen with a single differential equation, and that would be y equals e to the t a, this matrix exponential, which I've got a bunch of videos where I calculate that and go over the theory of how to calculate that. So this matrix exponential e to the t a times v, and v is an arbitrary vector. So in fact, that will depend on the initial conditions if we had some, but we don't in this case. So let's look in this video, we're going to look at y prime equals matrix A times y, where the matrix A is 2, 9, minus 1, minus 4. So that corresponds to the system of equations, y1 prime is 2y1 plus 9y2, and y2 prime is negative y1 minus 4y2. So since our solution will depend on this matrix exponential, and the first step of finding the matrix exponential is the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, that means that's what we're going to want to do for A. And that starts off with finding the characteristic polynomial of A, which is given by the determinant of x i minus a. So in this case, that's the determinant of x minus 2 minus 9 um, x, sorry, plus 1 and then x plus 4. Okay, good. So uh, let's see what we get from there. So we're going to have um, x minus 2 times x plus 4 and then let's see that is going to be plus 9. Okay, great. So uh, now, let's see, when we multiply that out, we're going to get that's equal to x squared. We'll have minus 2x plus 4x, so that's going to be plus 2x, and then we're going to have minus 8 plus 9, so that's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1, which factors to x plus 1 squared, which tells us we have a single eigenvalue of lambda equals minus 1. And then again, since we have a two by two matrix, we automatically know this is not diagonalizable because if it were diagonalizable, it would be a multiple of the identity, but that means it would commute with everything, but that means it would have to start off as a multiple of the identity. And obviously it didn't. Okay, great. So now we need to find the eigenvector that goes along with that eigenvalue. In other words, we need to look at the null space of uh, minus one times the identity minus a which is the same thing as plugging in minus one for x into this matrix. So let's see, that's gonna give us minus three, minus nine, one, and then let's see, that's gonna give us three. So, and that's the null space of that matrix. Okay, so we can do a bit of simplification. Notice that's the null space of one, three, zero, zero after some row reduction. Now let's suppose that a vector x, y is within that null space. So that tells us that this uh, matrix annihilates this vector x, y, so it sends it to 0, 0. But that gives us a system of equations for x and y. So we have x plus 3y equals 0, and then we have y is something we call a free variable. So x is not a free variable because it corresponds to a pivot column, but y does not correspond to a pivot column, so it is a free variable. Great. So uh, what this tells us is that x equals minus 3y, and then y is free. So we might as well uh, choose y to be equal to 1, um, which will give us an eigenvector uh, of minus 3, comma 1. Okay, good. So uh, I'll clean up the board, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so now we're in a good spot. So from the last board, we got a single eigenvector of lambda equals minus one. I've slightly rescaled my eigenvector to be three minus one, but that's okay. And then I 
uh, take this matrix P, which is not the diagonalizing matrix, but it's the matrix that gets our given matrix as close to diagonal as possible. So it's given by this eigenvector here and then one zero here. So this is something called a generalized eigenvector and it comes from the theory of Jordan canonical forms, which we're not gonna go over here. And then P inverse is given by the following. And then from that, we can calculate E to the TA to B. So that that's gonna be P, so three minus one, one zero, and then we'll have e to the minus t, t e to the minus t, zero e to the minus t. And then we'll ha finally have p inverse, which is as follows. So again, I'm skipping some steps here, but I've got some videos where um, we go over this type of exponential where we have a single eigenvalue. Um, Okay, great, so now if you were to multiply that out, you would get this solution for y prime, and so I'll write the solution for y prime and multiply all that out at the same time. And so what we'll get, I'll factor an e to the minus t out of the whole thing, because I can, and then I'll have one plus three t, a nine t here, and then minus t, and then one minus three t here, and then I have c1 and c2, and those are arbitrary constants which would depend on the initial conditions. And then if you'd rather see this as a system of equations, we have y1 equals two e to the minus t, and then let's see, we have uh, c1 plus c1 plus, plus three c1, plus 9c2 times t, and then uh, y2 will be e to the minus t, and then let's see what we get there. We get c2 plus uh, minus c1 minus 3c2 times t. Good, and there's our solution in that form. Okay, this is the end of the video.